Welcome back to the Forensic Detailing Channel. Today, we're going to cover the subject of decontamination. So if you've been watching the channel, you know that when you wash a car, the detergents get the surface roughly kind of clean. But over the years of using the car, you get certain types of dirt and debris that fall onto the paintwork and basically stick to it and leave a rough finish to your car and don't come off with detergents and washing. If you then go and polish a car that's heavily decontaminated, you're going to get dirt in your pads and you're going to be rubbing all of that kind of contamination over the surface, um, making the polishing, you know, less effective and even like putting in fine scratches. You just, that's just not the way to go. So the name of the game is after you've washed a car and you're preparing it for full machine polishing is to clay bar the car until the paint feels really nice and smooth and you've gone over and worked the clay bar over every kind of panel that you're going to polish. And even your front windscreen can be good as well, if required. So that's what decontamination is. Now, historically, decontamination has always been done through use of this flexible putty mixed in with abrasives. And you can get heavy clay bar with more, more abrasives and more aggressive abrasives through to lighter clay bar where the car has less contamination, this contains finer abrasives, less aggressive, but less likely to mar up your paint. So if in doubt, um, probably start off with a milder clay bar like this Built Hamber white one, which is a really good clay bar and it's very affordable, UK made. Okay, the disadvantage of traditional clay bar, as you can see, is really the size or the area of what you're claying. So to clay bar a bonnet, with a lump of clay, of course, this clay will be flattened out into a bigger disc. You've got to really work the clay over all of that bonnet and it takes time. And sometimes you have to sort of pass over an area and you have to be quite careful to get, make sure you get all the edges. Because if you're looking in pred predator vision of where you've clayed, it'll always be the edges and the little hard bits to get to that don't get as much dirt at. Um, that size also comes into its own when you're, deep, when you're trying to clay small intricate areas where the actual size of the clay then becomes ideal. You get the idea. So why are there other versions of, of clay and decontamination tools on the market? Well, I think it's primarily to make it a little bit easier for cars that um, aren't so heavily contaminated, decontaminated that you want to get most of the contamination off very rapidly, okay? So we saw the emergence of things like this clay cloth here, where you have a microfiber towel that's impregnated with a layer, slightly heavier duty, almost like more rubbery layer of the clay. Um, so this is mixed with some sort of resin and abrasives. Okay, so you saw the clay cloth. Now the advantage of the clay cloth is that just straight away you can cover area so much quicker rather than just having this little tiny dot making contact with you can whiz over the surface better the disadvantage with the clay cloth or clay mitt that we're going to talk about in a second is it's stuck your surface that's doing the decontamination is fixed you can't when this surface fills up with um, contamination you can roll it around back in on itself get a clean side you know, rework it and go again. This is going to build up contamination over time. And yes, you can kind of wash it out, get a brush on it if you like, but the fine contamination will stay stuck into that clay. And the more you use this, what you will notice under workshop lighting is after you've claying, you're getting very a buildup of more and more very fine scratches, which is something you need to be mindful of well, you're doing this as preparation for polishing. You want to be careful about going over cars and inflicting kind of scratches, you know. So I don't know what the word on the street is, but I think after you've clayed probably about four or five cars with one of these, that it's going to be built up with a lot of contamination. Um, and you'll notice what I'm talking about. Do you discard them or do you carry on using them for 5 to 10, 10 to 20? I don't know. I've kept this cloth here for ages, but it's rough and it will do exactly what I've just talked about if I use it. So that's one of the disadvantages of these um, clay cloths. You know, 
They're also not ideal for getting right into tight, intricate areas where a clay bar might be better, okay? The other disadvantage is because you're putting down... These, are, I think, are, have to be more aggressive because it's a bigger surface area and you're putting your hand over it so there's less pressure than when you work in the clay. So I think these might be a little bit more aggressive. And what can happen is when you clay a car, especially like a BMW that can have a lot of orange peel, it's almost like um, you get like a hazing of the little high spots. So you get like the leopard skin kind of orange peel um, if you clay really ag aggressively. Again, you can argue, well, it doesn't matter because you're going to be polishing it out. But you need to be careful because if you're working, the reason you would use these clay cloths is that 99% of details, polish, you know, clean polish and wax are done in a day all around the world. So these things come in very handy for working quickly. Um, if you're polishing quickly, you might miss some areas and it wouldn't look good if there was little bits of like peel around the edges where you haven't polished and all, all sorts of other considerations. So it's yin and yang and people have their favorites. Some people say clay is probably still the best thing to use and it probably is tried and tested. But I think these are really fantastic for you know getting over a car very very quickly when you've got to do a car in a day and if you're thorough you can go over 99 percent of it with this and then just use the clay bar for the more intricate areas like the front bumper so maybe you could have both okay um so we've covered really cut clay as a precursor for polishing um we've covered all of the considerations now today we're going to be reviewing and using for the first time this Froekler G3 Pro Deep Clean Clay Mitt, um, which lasts up to five times longer than traditional clay. That's quite subjective, you know, and it's hard to gauge because um, you can keep this stuff going for a long time. But when your clay starts to get dirty, you're going to be in the same boat where it's, it's the dirt you're rubbing over the surface rather than the clean clay bar. And again, it's that the clay is going to deteriorate over time. So... Typically, when this starts to look dirty, um, you know, and it doesn't feel like it's got that tack, um, then I will discard it and use fresh clay. It's just so probably, you know, after about anywhere between three to five cars worth, depending on how much dirt you pick up. Now, this clay mitt cost about £13. You can go and buy it in Halfords, which is really good to be able to access it anywhere immediately if you're in a hurry i'll also stick a link to amazon you can buy it from there if you want um where it's 13 pounds i think delivered uh, don't quote me on that because the prices always move around on amazon after i've shot the video but it looked like it was 12.99 delivered which is great um deep cleaner ideal surface preparation lasts up to five times longer easy glide application for controlled handling leaves a silky smooth finish absolutely yeah that's what they do the directions there are to wash the car dry the car and what does it say use the mitt with a g3 pro detailer well i don't want to use the detailer because detailers leave stuff behind they say you can use wash and wax i don't want to use wash and wax because it leaves wax behind and i'm polishing so I'm going to use a waterless wash solution because I'll just be able to wipe that off and it won't leave anything behind. Okay, now what we want to do is fire up the forensics high-tech heater because it's freezing. That's also softening down my clay slowly. Um, this is going to be cold. And what I'm going to do to soak this in my waterless wash solution. I'm gonna have that to hand. There's no real magic to this. I always say with clay, you wanna move the clay, clay bar quite quickly and, and gently. But I think the magic is probably just making sure, just get all the excess out of there, that you've actually covered all of the area. Now, I'm just going to use this on the glass. You can even see straight away that getting right into those edges is going to be, it's going to be the problem. So I'm not really pushing with any downforce. I'm just letting my hand flop over the surface. And I'm, I should put the windscreens up in the maintenance mode. I forgot, never mind. <sighs> Uh, 
and I want to get under that windscreen, so just bear with me. So, it should be broken in now. Also, bear in mind that when you clay onto a surface, if you've got any protection there, you're gonna seriously degrade it or strip most of it. So I'm on the remnants of this Ultra DX glass sealant now. It's been three or four months and it's dead. So I'm gonna clay that, repolish that with the Ultra compound and put the Ultra Glaco back on it, which lasts longer. So now I guess this is the important bit, doing your paintwork. And this is where, let's put the, put the uh, thing around here so you can, it's not gonna be wobbling all over the place. This is where you can really see how effective these tools are. So I can feel there's a bit of roughness to the paint. when you, if you dunk it in there it fills up with water and yet it kind of runs down your arm so that's something I'm noticing with the mitt. I tend to like to keep my hands free when I'm detailing so I suppose you've got the option with this of not putting your hand inside the mitt which feels much better to me. I feel like I can feel what's going on a little bit more. How do you know when you've decontaminated the area. Because it should feel smooth, there should be no roughness, there should be no noise, and it should just feel nice and silky smooth. When I hit a new area, I get that little, little bit of roughness and then it disappears. And that is just removing the contamination. So nice and light. Make sure I've got the edge. Next question. How long, how long should you take to decontaminate a car? Well, I suppose the strict answer is until you've done it properly. But that goes out the window if you've got the task of actually having to detail a car in one day. Um, so you really, you could argue that you, couldn't, you shouldn't be spending more than 30 minutes to one hour if you've got that time restriction of having to polish the car in a day. Because typically to get around a car, even if you're going rapidly, you're going to need four or five hours to do it rapidly and do a good job and get into all the edges and stuff. And even that's compromised, isn't it? So... The answer is how long does, should it take you to clay a car is depends on how much time you've got and how much contamination is there. With a car like this, which is two to three years old, and it's, you know, kept waxed, you know, and what, what have you, um, you could do it to a reasonable standard in half an hour doing what I'm doing. But ideally, if you're a perfectionist, you're going to want to spend probably more than that. But we're going to do it in about half an hour today. That's, that's the plan. Um, what's the other thing I need to talk about? How often should you do this claying? Well, you should do it as a precursor, really, to polishing for, what, for the reasons I spoke about before. If you clay and you don't polish, you're really going to put in fine marring, which can be buffed out with a hand polish and a hand glaze, but it's really hard work to do that. And if you're the type of guy that's decontaminating his paintwork and polishing it, then really um, you should have a little 
machine polisher like this, like a DAA, which doesn't cost a lot of money, and you can whiz over it. So, but typically, if you're using the car a reasonable amount, once a year, it can benefit from decontamination. Of course, so many variables that that could make that statement slightly invalid. So again, we're just going to just go gently. You can hear that, can't you? And then it starts to settle down. Oh, you hear it there. And even without putting this pressure down, just gliding it over the top, you know, gently. When I wipe this down and dry it off, there's going to be that surface marring that I talked about earlier on. No matter how careful you are, I think you're going to get a bit of it. But if you're light and you just do multiple passes, that is better than doing it with loads of pressure and really scrubbing into the paint and doing less passes. So nice light hands and just gently go over the surface. And if you use that little, like that, it's less tiring <laughs> than sort of doing this. You're just using your wrist a bit more. Make sure we get all that. And that, you can see, is where clay bar comes in handy. If I want to clay all this bit here and all along there, this mitt is going to be very compromised. In terms of reviews of this, I love the padding and it. It feels high quality. All the stitching feels amazing. It's rubberized on the inside. It feels solid, so it's not all flopping around, which I really, really like. It feels like you're getting a good... That padding allows you to get like a good pressure down on a on a flat surface, which is really handy and really, really nice. One thing I'll say, I can understand why I haven't put the clay all the way up to the edge because there's perhaps no pressure when you're doing this. You can see the pressure points where your fingers and your sort of hand is. But some people might argue you could, you could have clayed a bit put clay on a bit more of it. That tag, some people are gonna panic and say, that tag's gonna scratch your car. No, it's not. You pull it off if you're worried. It's, it's fabric. It's like when they have the labels on the cuffs of those wash mitts. You get people in the comments saying, oh, that, that label, well, that little tag is gonna scratch your car to pieces. No, it's not, it's fabric. Don't panic and don't talk a load of old nonsense. If you don't like them, cut them off but the reason that might be quite handy is to hang it up to let it dry out um and it doesn't seem to cause too much problem so i wouldn't be worried but yeah that is that is going to sort of like slip underneath and you are going to be rubbing on the paint with that so perhaps this is what we're looking at in these reviews perhaps they could have tucked stitched that in there so that the older blind panic brigade that live in a dream world <laughs> have something you know that would keep them happy um the thing that might keep me happy is having clay on both sides why well i know you're putting your hand on top but you get double the amount of usable clay then and effectively a product which has twice as much capability um i'd also love it if these came in a little i don't really need the mitt even do it doing the side this sticks to your hand even when you're vertical. So you're not gonna drop that. So I like, I'd like a little, I'd almost like, what I think would be a really good design is just a little foam, like just half of this without being a mitt and this clay thing. And then in the pack, you get like three or four of them, um, you know, for the same money. That would be five star for me. Um, but this feels really good and um, really, really good, actually. You can see it's, not, it's a nice quality. You, want to, you do also want to be careful of, um, we did a video on this years ago with the Alibaba knockoff. Well, not knockoffs, but the Alibaba mega cheap clay cloths. Because what I find with those is, the bit where they probably spend the money is the quality of the abrasives and the, this bit that they're putting on the cloth. Those Alibaba clay cloths that you can get for like four quid, five quid or whatever, 
they're shinier and they just don't seem to like bite into the paint as well. So I suspect they skimp on the abrasives and probably just put something that looks the same, like the rubbery bit, so that you think you're getting something that works. So I, when I tested those years ago against one, that one there, which was from Elite Car Care, and that costs about 10 to 15 pounds, that one was much better. If the Alibaba one was any good, I would use it, but it, it wasn't. This, this is really nice. I know it's working. So you can feel that roughness. It's just all that surface stuff. And then as you go over it, it starts to smooth up. Just nice and gentle. Let's just carry on. We'll just get right the way up to that edge. I'm sure we've done all down there. I've done that bit, I think. You can, you can actually feel the little bits you haven't done so well. Just because you get that little rough feeling. Right, let's do this nice and light. There. Let's get the edge here. And it feels rough there. And all that roughness, like I said at the start, it's going to be there when you polish. And that's what builds up in your pads and will affect your work. Yes, you can get away with it because when you polish, the polishes are nice and oily and glossy and they'll still give you a good finish. But if you think of the size of all this abrasive that you're leaving on the surface compared to the size of a micro abrasive, it's like comparing planet Earth to a golf ball. So you're really not going to be able to use the abrasive as well. And you're going to really, it's that dirt that's in the pad is going to be doing a lot of bad stuff in my head. Especially when it's on every panel. So that's the sort of time that it would take to, um, to, do, a, to do a bonnet. Obviously, I've been yakking away, so it'd be quicker. Now we look at the disadvantage, guys. You can still use this, like here. You know, you can still get in there, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure just to get in that recess, and it's working, actually. And you can. You know, you can use this if you don't have a clay bar. And just get in that, that rim and clay it gently. You can do that. Well, what I found is... On a car like this, it's probably not going to make too much difference. But if you get a car that's 10 or 15 years old and it's got loads of little lumps of contamination, these work best when you can really access the panel. So if there was lumps of contamination there, I can really access it. But if there was lumps of contamination here, it's a bit harder. And just getting that clay bar in there is going to get it off a little bit better. So I still think there's a place for clay bar. And given the choice of which two would you use... If you could only have one, I would probably go with clay bar because, like I said, when it is heavily contaminated, I find clay bar does a much more thorough job. Don't know why. Not much more, but more thorough job. But I would definitely always have one of these kicking around. Definitely. Like when we did the um, that trashed Mark I Golf, after we like washed the car down we phoned it again and we washed it with a clay cloth that one there because we weren't worried about the paint because the car was so hammered so we just went over it with fresh shampoo and like really aggressively claying um so we could get it clayed in like you know 20 minutes half an hour I didn't have to worry about the roof because it was convertible and it was it was like so efficient and so good and um, whereas we'd all been, we'd have all been scrubbing away with clay bars and it would have probably taken us a hell of a lot longer. So yeah, these products are tried and tested and proven. This is probably one of the best quality ones I've used. The price is really good. Would I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. I've covered everything in this video. Um, that's a really good price actually. And if you've got the Halfords trade discount card, you can get another 10% off it, which is another pound 50 or something. So you can, in theory, get it for close to £10, which I think is more than fair. Um, very good product. 
very handy to have generally. And if you've not used the clay cloth, don't be scared of it. Don't use it unless you know about clay marring in general and you have a machine polisher or you're happy to spend a lot of time buffing out by hand uh, clay marring, but machine polisher is the way. And there you go. So that is the Ferrecla G3 wash mitt. I've given you all of the things that you might want to moan about. You can go cheaper if you go on the Alibaba, blah, blah, blah. You might not want that on there, so cut it off if you don't. Some people might want two sides. There's an argument that you should, one side is better, but not for me. I like the old value for money. I love this, and I wish they did a little pack of square ones with this padding. No mitt. Five of them in there or something like that then I'd be a customer for life buying them all the time because they are very, very good. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on clay versus clay mitts or clay cloths, etc. Have you even got the clay pads? I've got another one of those in there as well that we could talk about, but we've done that comparison. Which clay method do you use? Um, why do you use that? Do you agree with what I've said in this video? Um, this isn't complicated, it's really just about, I think, just doing it properly. A bit like every process of detailing, you can skip it, can't you? You can wash a car very quickly if you want to, but then you might come to do all the decontamination and polishing and find dirt all in here. And, you know, on certain cars with rubber mouldings, all dirt underneath there that you get pulled in. So you, you've got to do your wash properly. If you don't decontaminate properly, then... Around the edges and the bits you don't contam you know you don't you don't clay properly. You go over and polish it, and it gets. You can sometimes see the polish drag over the little bumps, and when that happens, you know that you know that that's a no no. Um, same with the back of the car; there will be a lot more contamination on that back. And by the time you've started on the front and you work your way down to the back, what can happen is you start getting quicker and quicker because you. You're looking at your watch and thinking lunch is coming, you want to get it done, and then you don't do the back as well. And then that's really the key to doing anything, isn't it? The discipline to just keep going and maintaining the same standard when you start playing all the way through the car to the end. And it's easy to talk a good game, but we all speed up a little bit. <laughs> so I'm now going to switch the camera off and spend probably about an hour. I might have said half an hour earlier, about an hour just making sure I do this properly. And that's it for today for me. I'm gonna go out after that, and then I'm gonna polish. And I'll do another video on what we're gonna to do to polish. And we've got a little cool combo to try that I think is really gonna work. So thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, we do all sorts of like detailing tips, product comparisons. I'm gonna be getting going on a new product comparison soon, buying all the products in. And um, so don't forget to subscribe. And uh, other than that, take care and I'll see you soon.